In this video, we will show you how to replace your passenger side front CV axle on this Jeep Grand Cherokee. This will be located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground and the suspension is hanging. Once you've done that, let's continue on to removing all five of our 22 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's focus on the 32 millimeter axle nut in the center here. Once we have that removed, we'll be using the axle nut as a spacer and using one of our lug nuts to hold the brake rotor in place. If you're using a hand ratchet trying to remove this, you may find that this wants to spin on you. If that's the case, you could have a second person inside the passenger compartment holding the brake pedal or use a pry bar diagonally down to the ground, preventing this from spinning. As I mentioned, we'll be using that axle nut as a spacer on our lug nut here. Let's go ahead and start that on. We'll use a hammer and punch directly in the center of the axle. Once you have movement from the axle in comparison to the wheel bearing located behind it, we can continue on. Continuing from here, let's start separating the outer tie rod end from the steering knuckle. This is held in place with a 21 millimeter mounting nut. We'll go ahead and remove that, start it back on there a couple threads, and then we can tap on the steering knuckle, trying to cause some vibration to allow this to separate. Let's use some penetrant on this. A quick inspection of the outer tie rod to make sure there's no damage here. This one looks fine. Let's focus on removing the lower aspect of the sway bar link from the lower control arm. For this, you're going to find that there's an 18 millimeter mounting nut holding the stud for the sway bar link to the control arm. That's going to be located on the back side. As for holding this in place, it's a good idea to use some locking pliers. We're going to hold on to the studded area right along the front here, being extremely careful for our sway bar link boot. You don't want to cause any damage. While holding this, we can remove the 18 millimeter headed mounting nut from the backside. Swing that out of position. A quick confirmation on the boot here. That looks like it's still in great condition as well. After you set that sway bar link aside, we can continue on to the lower aspect of the front strut where it connects to the lower control arm. Along the front, you're going to find a 24 millimeter mounting nut. The bolt actually comes through from the rear towards the front and the bolt head is a 21 millimeter. I'll be holding the bolt head with a 21 millimeter wrench and a 24 millimeter socket along the front here to remove that nut. Now we can make our way along the back side here. We'll be looking for our brake flex hose and ABS wire. It's always a good idea to go ahead and separate these two. On the brake flex hose, they have plastic clips. You can just separate those two locking ears and slide it right out of position. Just wanna make sure we have plenty of slack from both of these areas. Let's apply a light amount of support underneath our lower control arm. While holding pressure in this area, we can continue on up at our upper ball joint. We'll be removing our 21 millimeter nut that holds the ball joint stud to your steering knuckle. Quick 
quick inspection of that. We'll start it back on a couple threads, add a little bit of penetrant and a couple taps, and we'll separate this ball joint. At this point, we can pull down on that upper control arm, remove our mounting nut, and separate this area. Now, as we start separating this, we need to pay attention to our axle shaft. You can see some of it sticking out through the wheel bearing hub. We need to press this inboard towards the center of the vehicle, removing it from the back side of the wheel bearing. We'll lower the support from under the control arm as needed as we continue. Start pulling the axle out of here. It's gonna come out and away towards where the outer tie rod end would have been. If you find you have a hard time flexing this up and down, you could use a pry bar as necessary. Now that we have that separated, we can remove the small spacer here. We'll set it aside, we will be reusing this. Now as we make our way in, we're looking for the area that the axle goes into your front differential. We're going to tap on the end of the axle here, trying to drive it out and away from the vehicle. You could also use an axle separator or even a pry bar if necessary. Once it's broken free from in there, we'll just go ahead and make our way back out here. We can give it a little tug. Now you can see the axle making its way out. We're going to have to lower this down in between this area so we can slide it out in between the lower aspect of the strut and that lower control arm. Just roll it right on through there. Now that we have that pulled out of there, we're going to carefully flex the front strut rearward so we can slide the axle up and through this area. Be extremely careful not to cause any damage to the sway bar link or your front strut assembly. There it is, friend. With the axle out of position, the next thing you need to do is clean and inspect the mounting point. We have our seal right along this area. We'll give it a quick wipe, a close inspection. Make sure it's soft and pliable, not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Once you've cleaned that area, we'll apply a tiny bit of petroleum jelly or even some silicone paste along the seal to help the brand new axle slide into place safely. Now it's time to install our brand new front axle assembly. The installation for this is pretty much the reversal of the removal process. We're just gonna carefully slide this into place. Now, as we start to align this, we're being extremely careful for our boots, but we're also going to put the far end into the front differential as we continue aligning everything. We'll make sure that it goes up and in between the lower strut and the lower control arm. Now we can start aligning this and driving it straight in. Continue installing this by lightly tapping it inward. This might take several tries, but we need to make sure it's completely locked in. Once it feels as though it's seated, let's reach from the inside and try to remove it. If it slides out, it's not locked in. Assuming it doesn't, you can continue on. A light coating of anti-seize on the splined area for the outer portion here. Once you've done that, we can take this and slide it in along the back side of the wheel bearing. We've applied our coating here. Install our spacer right over this area. Now we're going to flex this, bring it in along the back side of the wheel bearing. After we've completed that, we'll apply some support underneath the lower control arm and then pay attention at that upper ball joint. I can see my axle protruding through the outer portion here. Continuing from this point, we're going to start raising up that lower suspension again. We'll just apply a little bit of support here. Be extremely careful for your ball joint, the boot, and everything else around it. Looking for my mounting point here. Start getting that aligned. 
Before we continue too much down along the bottom, let's focus up along the top at the upper ball joint. Pull this down into position, start on your mounting nut. Up along the upper ball joint, we're going to have to pull down on the control arm. By pressing it down, it's going to hold the stud into the steering knuckle. Once it's held in place, we can go ahead and tighten this and then torque it to 70 foot pounds. Use a pry bar along the top here if necessary. What you're going to find when you go to torque this is the whole steering knuckle will want to turn on you. You want to be extremely careful not to apply too much pressure while turning this because at this point you could cause damage to your flex hose or even your brand new axle. So with that said, rather than causing any pressure on those two areas, we'll pause on torquing this and make our way to the lower mounting hardware. Remove support from under your lower control arm. Continuing from there, you may have to either lower or raise the suspension as necessary to get the mounting bolt in between the lower strut and your control arm. Keep in mind this mounting bolt comes through from the rear towards the front and not the front towards the rear. Use a hammer to tap it through if necessary. Once you've driven it through there, continue on with your 24 millimeter mounting nut. With everything together, we're going to reapply upward pressure on the lower control arm. Once you snug this, torque it to 173 foot pounds. Remove support. It's time for our sway bar link. We're going to take this, swing it into position on the lower control arm. We'll start on that mounting nut. After that, we'll snug it up and torque it to 90 foot pounds. Hold that stud with our locking pliers again, just like before. Now it's time for the outer tie rod end. Once it's started on, snug it up, we'll torque that to 70 foot pounds. Let's make our way back up to the upper ball joint now. The torque for this is 70 foot-pounds. Now along the back side here, we're going to re-secure our ABS wire to the flex hose. For this, you just want to align it with its plastic locking clips. Press it in between. Give it a wiggle. Make sure it's properly secured as you continue on to the next one. If it feels as though any of this is loose or might come apart on you while you're driving down the road, Use a couple wire ties. Continuing from here, it's time for the axle nut. But if you were to look at your brand new axle nut, you can see that it has three peened in locking tabs. When you go to tighten this onto the axle, it'll go on so far, but once it gets to the locks, it's going to want to spin the axle on you. At this point, what you could do is have a second person inside the passenger compartment holding on that brake, 
or we'll just bring this down closer to the ground and hold it in place diagonally with a pry bar. When using a pry bar diagonally like this, you want to be extremely careful that it's not at an angle where it could potentially cause some damage to your studs. We'll have this as flat as possible, apply light pressure. Now we'll continue on tightening this using a hand tool. You never want to use an impact tool because you could cause damage to your wheel bearing. After it's snug, we'll torque this to 229 foot pounds. All right, I've got it bottomed out. Let's torque it. Remove your lug nut and spacer. Okay, one last inspection in this area. We'll reinstall our wheel. Start on all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out, get the wheel safely on the ground, then we can torque each of these to 130 foot pounds. We've got the wheel back on the ground, let's torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friend, we finished the installation of our front axle. At this point, what you need to do is go ahead and start up the vehicle. Take it for a short road test. Make sure you have no ABS light, no funny shakes coming from the front end, and then get yourself a four wheel alignment. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.